In this video, I just want to provide you with a few examples of different tread sizes and riser sizes and how they affect the structural strength of the stringer. That would be this number here. And as you can see here, we have a 10 inch tread, 7 inch riser with a 5 and 3 quarter inch measurement from here to here out of a piece of 2 by 12 lumber. Now, if I make these steps longer, you can see where this measurement here is going to get shorter. So keep in mind, I haven't changed the riser just the length of the tread. And if I change the riser height to seven and a half inches, you can see here where this is going to be five and a half, this is going to be five and an eighth. And of course that number will gradually get smaller as we work our way down using longer steps. Next up, let's use an eight inch riser. Again, you can check out the measurements here see what they would be. And don't forget, you can always use a 2x14 or a 2x16 if you're worried about this measurement. For example, here we almost have a 2x6. And if I wanted to increase it to 7 and a quarter inches, I just got to go to a 2x14. And even though I cannot provide you with the minimum measurements because I don't know what type of stairway you're going to be building or whether or not the stair stringers are going to be supported, what kind of treads and risers you're going to use, and what the on-center spacing would be for those stringers. But I can provide you with these measurements here in this video. Next up, let's go to a six and a half inch riser. Here we're going to have a little larger number. And of course that would make sense. Work our way down to where we have a five and a half inch number here for a six and a half inch riser with a 16 inch long step. And next up, let's go ahead and change up some of this stuff. Let's make the step a little longer. You can see here where we're not that far off. And if I go to a five and a half inch riser with a two foot long step, I'm going to have six and an eighth inches here. And that would probably work on a span of up to seven feet, I'm guessing. And here we have a six inch riser with a three foot long step. And we still end up with just a little bit over five and a half inches. And the problem you're going to run into if you do need to use measurements like these is that you're not going to be able to run the stringer longer than maybe three steps without providing some type of structural support. And keep in mind that the reason for making this video wasn't to provide you with structural information. I wanted to make you aware of how this number changes with different riser heights and tread depths along with the material used. Going to use a 2x10 or a 2x14. If this was going to be a 2x10, this number right here would be 3 and 9 sixteenths. And I'm guessing you couldn't span that more than two steps, but that probably wouldn't be correct either. In this video, I will be providing you with a few different ways you can install plumbing drain, vent, and water supply pipes to where they won't do any damage to the stair stringers or do the least amount of damage to those stair stringers. So number one on the list will be going underneath the stairway that does not have a closet and you can run the pipes without damaging the stringers under those stair stringers like we have done here. And if this area is not going to be accessible, then the pipes can run underneath the stringers anywhere in that area as long as it meets your local plumbing codes. However, today most people want to install a closet. So let's go ahead and install our door here and then take a look at the exact location of that plumbing pipe and see if we can't move it to a better spot to make drywalling the ceiling in our closet a little easier. And even though something like this won't be difficult to install some type of framing that would allow you to drywall around the pipe, it's going to be a little bit better if you can move the pipe closer to the bottom of the stair stringers. And of course that would be if you have a situation like this. Sometimes you're going to need to do a little more planning. Now another thing you can do will be to install a wall in front of the plumbing pipe like we've done here. However, this will be making the closet a little smaller. So if you don't like this idea, what about this idea? Nailing a couple of 2x4s or whatever you need to the wall framing. And you can even use building hardware, maybe some straps or small pieces of plywood or other lumber so that you can attach a 2x4 or a 2x6 and lower the ceiling to make it straight. But let's not do any of this until we check out the next example where we can shape a couple of boards so that we can drywall around the pipe. So here we'd be able to attach the drywall to the bottom of the stringers on both sides and then just simply come up and then cut a piece of drywall for here and then one for over here to eliminate drilling a hole or notching into the stair stringers. And hopefully that makes sense. 
Now, if you do need to drill through the stair stringers, then I think avoiding this area here will make a little more sense. And I'm not about to suggest you need to avoid drilling holes here at all. If you're going to be using risers that will provide structural support for the center stair stringer and then transfer the structural load to the outer stair stringers that are going to be attached to the wall framing or supported by other types of structural framing. And for those of you who have never built any stairs, trust me, once you start installing the risers and you do have the stringers attached to the framing studs where they can be attached, your stairway is going to get a lot stronger after the risers have been nailed. So let's go ahead and remove the treads so that I can prove my point here a little bit better. So if I use plywood, now OSB works just fine, and I would imagine a one by eight would work fine here, or even a two by eight. And what the plywood's going to do basically is make the center stringer more rigid because it's gonna be transferring some of the load away from the center of the stair stringer and towards the outer part that is fastened to the wall. Now on a wide stairway, this might not work as well, but on a stairway that's less than four foot wide, these risers are really gonna make a big difference. So if you don't install any risers, I would strongly suggest to avoid drilling holes through the stair stringers, unless you relocate the pipe to where it's in what I would consider to be the non-structural section of the stringer. So here we've located the pipe in the center of the riser height so that we could nail the bottom and the top of the riser. And the only problem that I have with the location here is that you could have a section of the stringer actually split here. So this right here would be a weak point on the stringer. And this might not be the best position for our pipe. So you can either lower it like we've done here or move it over to here. And I think this is going to provide us with the best location because we're going to be able to nail the back of the tread as well as not worrying about the front of the stringer splitting off here. And I'm not about to suggest it won't ever split. You won't ever have a problem here because a lot of it's going to depend upon where the knots are located along with what type of lumber and what grade of lumber you're using. And if you notice, I kept the notches or the holes that I'm gonna drill in the stair stringers out of this section of the stringer. This area here is unaffected by the notches cut out of the stair stringer for the treads and risers, providing us with the area where most of the structural strength is in the stair stringer or in that lumber. And I would also like to point out that I am not a structural engineer. However, I have built a lot of stairs, even though I didn't work on a lot of projects where we had plumbing pipes running through the stair stringers. In this video, I want to provide you with a picture and then a couple of illustrations or reasons why this might not work as a guardrail or a grippable handrail, along with how you might be able to use a curved section for the top of a guardrail or grippable handrail. So the first thing I want to do is draw something that might work as a grippable handrail, something between 34 and 38 inches, along with something that might work as a guardrail, something between 34 and 42 inches, according to some of the building codes I found in different cities, counties, and states throughout America. And in this example here, we're going to draw a curved radius. We're going to take the center point here, the center of this distance here, and then just draw a curved surface. And even though this particular radius might not work for your project, we might be able to just move it up a little bit because all we need for this handrail to work would be to have this curved surface fall between the minimum and maximum distances for a grippable handrail, or simply have the minimum measurement of the arc higher than the minimum measurement for the guardrail. However, that's not going to work for the picture that I provided you with in the video, but I'm not about to suggest it won't get the job done, even though it does look a little flimsy. And if I just simply create an arc from this point to this point to this point, and these lines just need to be within four inches of the minimum and maximum, 34 inches minimum, 38 inches maximum, then there's a good chance this one here will actually work for this particular design. However, I don't know how well it's going to work once these stairways start to get a little bit larger or shorter. 
Here is a quick tip I wanted to throw out for anyone that has a wood finished stairway and not a stairway that would be covered in tile or carpeting because I really don't think this idea is going to work for those stairs unless you remove the tile and the carpeting. And if you have to do that, then you could probably make further repairs to make sure that the wood is no longer moving that is causing the noise. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that the most common squeaks are going to be between wood and metal or wood and wood. So one of these squeaks would be when a stair step moves up and down and rubs up against the side of a nail. And if that's the case, and you can somehow put some graphite or some type of a powder lubricant, I really don't recommend using a liquid lubricant like grease. That could be even messier. Powdered lubricants can be messy. And I'm not about to suggest it's going to be the best thing you can use. But I am suggesting that it might be worth trying. And if you try it once or twice and you don't like it, then don't use it again. So nails that are attaching the treads to the stringers are the nails that I'm referring to. The second biggest problem is going to be between the stringers where the back of the tread is rubbing up against the front of the riser as you put your foot on top of the tread and the tread flexes just a little bit. It just moves a little bit up and down because the stringers are spaced too far apart from each other. Then you can simply sprinkle some graphite in this area. Now you should be able to sprinkle the graphite into the gap between the tread and the riser and then kind of work the graphite in with either a small brush or even by moving the tread with your foot kind of applying some pressure to that area until the stair stops squeaking in that area. And the only reason why I made this video is just to provide people with another option. And if you are looking for more of a permanent fix, I will put a link in the video description box where you can find more videos on how to fix squeaking stairs. In this video, I am going to attempt to explain again. I think I have made other videos on this. And don't forget that I do have books at our website you can get that will explain it in a different way. But what I'm going to do in this video here is try to explain how the overall individual riser height affects the stair stringer when it comes to positioning the stair stringer. So here we have at the bottom inch and a half thick treads and an inch and a half piece of treated lumber in between the stringers and the concrete. Next up, let's go ahead and add this piece right here along with the riser height numbers, seven and a quarter. And this piece right here will represent the overall height of the riser. And you can see here where the stair stringer is not going to be seven and a quarter. We're gonna to have to subtract the width of the tread and the width of the lumber supporting the stringers. And you're just simply going to take it off of the bottom of the stringer. Again, I have more detailed information about that in the book. And I have plenty of other videos. If this doesn't make sense, go to the website and check them out. Next up, let's head to the next step. You can see here where the top of the seven and a quarter inch measurement here is even with the top of the tread. And if we come down an inch and a half, that's where the stringer is going to be located. This is the key to this video. And this location here will be the same all the way up to the top. And if I was going to be using three quarter inch plywood, then I would have three quarters of an inch from the top of the step to the top of the stringer. Let's go ahead and pan out here so we can get the overall height between levels, first level, second level. And you can see here where we have one, two, three, four, five, six risers at seven and a quarter. And if we divide six into three foot seven and a half, we should get seven and a quarter inches. And if that doesn't make sense, let's go ahead and draw a finished stairway. This is the finished side of the riser. This will be the finished side of the tread. 
each one going all the way up to the top. And again, the stair stringer is going to be located below the top of the step, not at the top of the step. We can't have the stair stringer even with the top of our step and then add the thickness of the tread to it. Or forget to subtract the thickness of any materials we're going to use to support the stair stringers. And this is probably the most common problem you're going to run into as a new stair builder. It's difficult to get this through your mind sometime. I even had a problem with it when I was learning. Next up, let's go ahead and head back down to the bottom where we can see here we have the thickness of the tread. And if we remove the stringer to provide you with the materials that we used to fill that void we just looked at. Bottom of the treads again should be the top of the stair stringer. And as always, if you have any questions at all about this, something you, you almost got it, I might have missed something, and you're on the verge of a breakthrough, then leave your questions in the comment area. And I will try to answer them as soon as possible. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.